Hey guys, it's Ruri and today we're launching the life support module for the Kerbal Space Station in obviously Kerbal, uh, the hardcore series thing. So we're going to get set off and uh, I'll explain a bit more about this rocket as we go on. You'll notice the, uh, I guess the solid rocket boosters, they don't have that much thrust really. You'll, you'll re probably realize they're not, they don't look like they're on full throttle at all. That, that's because they're not, because we're actually aiming for quite a low thrust to weight ratio on this one, about 1.3 um, from launch. So that's why they're not throttled up so much, basically. Just so you know, um, they're just little booster rockets to add that bit of delta V that we probably will need. And now we should have started our gravity turn a little while ago, so I'm going to start it now and start it a little bit more aggressively. So by this point we should be down here somewhere. I'm going to turn SAS off as well. So that should be an okay start around there. I'm just going to keep encouraging a little bit because I have been a little bit late with this. But uh, we should be okay. And there we go. Yep, now it's looking pretty decent. Still maybe encourage it over a little bit more. Um, and then we should be okay. The atmosphere is starting to get thinner now anyway, so there's not too much risk of us spinning a rocket out. Um, but that is a risk when you're sort of below 10 kilometers. I guess it still is a risk up here, but you'd have to, you know, turn a lot more than I am. And yeah, we're looking okay now, the apoapsis is going up fine. So I can probably afford to just leave this as is. And the solid rocket boosters are about to run out as well, so I can split those off. And uh, now it's just time to get the apoapsis height up. <coughs> I think one of them hit another one, not sure. It just made an explosion noise, that's all. And now I'm going to have to start using SAS as well. Oh. There we go, just keep burning, keep that apoapsis height going up gradually. And keep building up the horizontal speed as well. And this thing is an altitude of 75, or just over 75 um, kilometers, so we can uh, try and get it somewhere around there. So there's 75, and what I'm going to do now is jettison the um, those, and I'm going to activate the antennae because those aren't going to get ripped off by the atmosphere anymore. Um, and then we'll be able to access the satellites that are everywhere else, which is useful. We've still got how much delta V? 3,000 meters a second of delta V, so it may maybe take us 1,000 at most to circularize, and then we've got another 2,000 to work with to get ourselves and, you know, a sort of close approach. So it's the And set that as our target. Just make sure. Yeah, we set the right one as the target, that's good. Um, you may have noticed in the last episode there was actually a Kerbal up there, or a Kerbal in the launch. I went back and checked afterwards, um, and he wasn't there, so <laughs> I have no idea if he died or what happened there, to be honest. Anyway, I start the burn a little bit later than we put in stock KSP, just because our orbit's a bit more elongated than it would normally be. Um, you know, our orbital velocity is already 1,500 meters a second, whereas in normal KSP you'd probably be looking at uh, 1,100, 200 if you did a sort of normal gravity turn, even though it's not really a gravity turn, but you know what I mean. So now it's time to circularize, and hopefully we'll be able to get this, um, get this going well. We do also have a lot of RCS built into this, so. 81 and 72. That's not perfect, but it's it's workable. So, there is intersect 2, there is intersect 1. Um, they're actually on the ascending and descending nodes, which is, which is why they're an intersect, because our inclination is a little bit off. But that's okay. Um, we can deal with that. So I'm going to go there, and uh, you'll see that it is going to be over here when we're here. So we need to burn 
uh, prograde, obviously, because we're so close to the curb and we couldn't burn retrograde, um, so that it we cat or it catches up with us. It has time to ca catch up with us um, in its orbit. And to make this uh, a little bit more efficient, we do have plenty of power, so we can do a few orbits before we before we get there. So if I make the orbit a little bit bigger, like that, then leave us a couple of orbits. Eventually, uh, we'll go round and. Eventually it'll be a bit closer, and when it gets to that, I'll then fine-tune it so that um, so that we get an actual really close approach. And yeah, that's all I can really hope for at the moment. Uh, so, uh, let's time walk around here and see where it goes. So the next encounter is going to be, or the next close approach is going to be there instead. So I'll leave it to go one more round and it'll be about here and then from there I'll just adjust it. Um, I might leave it one more after that actually because I can burn a little bit of retrograde and bring this in so it catches up less. That'll work. Uh, we can do that. So this is the most efficient way of doing it, what I could have done. You'll see now I have still an absolute ton of delta v left. What I could have done is burn an orbit way out here, and then had to burn it back again, and that would have used a lot more delta v, but would have been quicker. But the speed doesn't really matter for this. Uh, if it takes you know an extra few hours to do it, then that's fine. Okay, so the next approach is here. So now I'm going to go around and see where the one after that is, basically. Um, and it should be around where we are, and then we can just adjust the apoapsis a little bit. Hopefully we won't need to do it too much and that should give us the encounter that we want. And it'll be very efficient as well because you can see as I said we've still got 3000 meters of meters per second of delta V which is quite a lot. Plus we have the RCS as well. So now it's time to slow down And it's just past us, which means we need to burn retrograde. And actually, to do this, I'm going to use RCS. Uh, so I need to burn retrograde like that. If I use a bit of RCS, that's fine. It just means I don't have to turn the whole thing around, and I can fine-tune this pretty well if I burn retrograde. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, if I use RCS, I can fine-tune this really well. You can see it's changing really slowly, so that makes it a bit easier. And the separation is going to be... Let's see, let's get that as close as we can, a few hundred meters, that's really really nice. So now it's time to go all the way around up to the apoapsis, or apo key. Um, I'll explain that actually. If you're around uh, Kerbin, then it is the apo key. If you're around um, Earth, it's the apo G, and that just comes from if you imagine geo, you know, everything to do with Earth, you refer to it as geo. So it's the apo G because it's around the Earth. And then Kerbin, it's key. So it's you go, you go to a geostationary orbit. And you'll see now I'm pointing towards prograde. And the reason I'm doing that, instead of just time warping around, is because if I, if I point towards prograde now, then when I come around here, I'll be pointing retrograde, which is the direction I'm going to need to burn to get my target velocity down. And you'll see it's fairly close anyway, but... Uh, where are we? Okay. So now I'm going to get ready to point in that direction, and... Time warp a little bit more. I'll just see, yeah, we can burn this away pretty quickly. And that's that's already made the separation go up. So let's just wait till we get a lot closer now. That wasn't even full throttle. This is full throttle though. And let's bring the target velocity down to as close to zero as possible. And now we're going towards the target at 0 0.7 meters a second. And if we have a look here, you can see it's 600 meters away. So that's all good. Um, gonna burn a little bit more. 
very very gently now to get to get us going straight towards it. And then after that's done, we don't really need this uh, the rocket anymore, even though it still has probably quite a lot of delta v. Let's have a look: 1,500 meters a second of delta v apparently left. So there we go. We're going at a few meters a second towards it, and I believe that means I can split ourselves off switch to this one, so we're close enough to switch to the wrong one, um, control from there, and then we need to set that as our target again, so that is the command module, there we go. So now we're going towards it, just make sure we're going exactly towards it just by burning like that, and then I'm quickly going to switch over to this and bring it back down to the Earth or Kerbin um, by burning retrograde, so I need to go orbital retrograde, which is this way, and then I just need to burn. And there is no way that that is going to survive. So let's see if I can go back to the map view. Switch to the one of the two, it doesn't really matter. And switch back, set the target. There we go. And now I just need to keep going towards it very gently. Um, and I think actually I can do this with translation rather than rotation. So let's have a look. Yep, I can. There we go. So then I'm not really increasing the speed, I'm just changing the direction. Um, and now we can keep going. And so now we're only 100, 100 and odd meters away. Now I can burn a retrograde a little bit. I'm still trying to keep that forward marker, the prograde marker, on the pink marker, which is the marker pointing towards our target. Um, just that a little bit. I've never actually used docking mode. I know some people have. Some people use it a lot. And you, in docking mode, you use spacebar to switch between rotation and translation. But I just use the I, J, K, and L keys. I find that a lot easier to just do it two handed almost. So now we're coming in a bit slower, but we're still coming. And it's getting closer. There it is. So now we need to decide which docking port we want to dock with, at least for now. Obviously we can change that if we really need to. Um, so let's have a look. Still go in the right direction by the looks of things. Just adjust that a little bit. And let's say we want to dock with this one, so we can set that as our target. And then I'm going to burn retrograde. And there we go. So now we're going very, very gently towards it, which is fine. And we're going to be in the sunlight as well, which is nice um, to make it a little bit easier to see things. OK, so was this one? Yes, yeah, this one. So now. I'm actually going to orient this this thing so it's pointing north-south, which will make that easier. And hopefully I can... Oh no, I can't actually control this. That's a bit annoying, really. Oh well, it's, I guess it ran out of whatever it needed to keep itself oriented the right way. So this is going to be a little bit more complicated, but hopefully not too much more complicated. Um, so that is now oriented around the right way. So now I'm going to switch to the chase camera. Just see if these controls make sense. So now, if I just go backwards a little bit, then forwards a little bit so that we don't keep going backwards. Then this way. So now we're sort of getting lined up. And then... Mm, that 
looks pretty good. So let's just start going towards it and adjust the velocity so that the velocity is directly at it. And then it should dock. And there we are. The start of the station is there. So, I guess that's it for this episode. Um, let's make sure we can orient this properly. And I'm going to right click on this and do control from here. And then point this so that this is north. Which means the station will be this way. Which is fine. Let's see, we've got plenty of resources, do we? We still have, oh yeah, we've got, we've got all the, the resources there, that's all good. How much RCS do we have? Plenty of RCS for probably the whole station, so we don't need to bring up any more of that really, at least for the time being. We can bring up a uh, shuttle maybe to refill it, but that's fine. The, we're going to need to design a shuttle that's going to take kerbals up and refill and empty all of these as well. Um, so that will be a thing we need to design in the future. But that's it for this episode guys, so as always, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.